Teams. To get started with Teams, you can select Teams from the Windows icon and scroll down to Microsoft Teams. If you don't have the app on your desktop, you can open a new browser and enter teams.microsoft.com. That will take you to the portal of your district Teams account. From there, you could download the app from the left-hand side at the bottom where it says Apps by clicking Apps and searching Teams. Once installed, you'll be able to locate it from the Windows icon and you scroll down to Microsoft Teams. To create a meeting, you'll open up your Teams account and go to Calendar. In Calendar, you'll be able to create a new meeting. On the right-hand side, under New Meeting, if you select the scroll down button, you'll have the types of meetings available. You're able to have a webinar, which the host interactive event with registration. You can have a town hall to produce events for a large audience. You can have a class where students can only chat during the meeting, or you can have a lecture that students can chat before and after the meeting. If you don't want to use any of the templates, just select new meeting. In the new meeting, you will need to enter your details for your meeting. We'll enter sample meeting. Sample meeting two. Um, if you have people that you know you already you're going to invite so they could send them the email, you can add them as well. These are optional. You'll select the date for the meeting, the time. Let's put this one for 7.30. And how long the meeting is going to be. Maybe you want it for one hour. Does it repeat? If it repeats, you can select every day, weekday, Monday through Friday, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or customize it as needed. You could add a location. For this team, we can, you're going to say Teams. You could add a description. You can have more options as well. On the right hand side, there says more options. Who can bypass the lobby? That's your waiting room. People in my organization, everyone, people I invite. So you have an option of who needs to be in the lobby when they or the waiting room as we used to call it in Zoom. People dialing in can bypass the lobby if there's someone got dialing in through the app on the phone. Uh, announce when people join or leave. That gives you the chime. Choose co-organizers like a co um, if you have a co-teacher that also want you're able to um, open the meeting. Who can present? Do you want people, everyone or specific people? Um, so you have the choice of to controlling who's going to be able to present on your meeting. Allow a mic for the attendees so that they can speak. Allow the cameras that's on or off. You want to record the meeting automatically. Do you want the chat on or off or in meeting only? You have those options as well. You're able to have questions and answers. Allow reactions such as the emojis. Enable a green room, which gives you more avatars as well. Language interpretations available for you as well, but you will need to assign someone to do that. Um, and Copilot, who's, who's going to help you um, um, with the class. Allow attendance report. If you want to make sure that you get attendance reports of who's in your meeting, you'll enable that as well. Once you've selected your meeting options, click Save and you are done. You can exit out. Once all your specific requirements are in, you'll click Save. And now the meeting is in your calendar. Sharing the meeting link. If you did not enter email addresses in your meeting, you can still share the meeting link by going to your Teams, select your calendar, select your meeting, and you're able to copy the link once copied, you could send it 
via your preferred way, Google Classroom, by via email. You'll post your link, send it to the people that you want to send them to. Um, and send it whichever method you prefer to send. Um, again, you could post it as a Google Classroom for your students or um, send it via email as well. To start your meeting, you can either open up your Teams app or go to the website or open up your Outlook calendar, which also synchronizes with the Teams meeting. We have our sample meeting for Teams. We'll open that up. And we're going to click to join our meeting. When you open your meeting, you'll be able to choose video and audio options. Do you want your camera on or off? You'll have effects for avatars. You have video effects. Video effects, you want it blurred. Do you want a, a different background on you? Do you want none? So it's totally the options up to you. The audio is your computer. The speaker is on, it's showing me here. If you want room audio nearby, if you have some other audio um, connected, but the audio by default will come in from your computer. And then you select, once your preferences have been made, select join now. Now this is the few view, full view of your Teams meeting. What we're going to be going over are the options that you have on the top of their screen. You could choose to leave meeting, leave meeting or end meeting. You have share, microphone, camera, you have more, the apps, rooms, view, react, raise, people, and chat. So we'll be going over those. We'll start with the ellipse where it says more. When you select the list apps where it says more, you'll have the first option is to record and transcribe. When you select it, you can start recording your session or you can start a transcription of the um, session that you're currently having. Below it, you have meeting info. Gives you the meeting information that was provided that you, when you created. Underneath meeting info, you have effects and avatars. Again, it'll give you the option of blurring your screen. We could do a preview. And it'll show you a preview on the bottom right hand side. Stop preview. Apply and turn video on. So now it's blurred. And let's put a different cool one. Apply. So there we go. So that's where um, you have for more and effects and avatars. You also have language and speech. You're able to turn on live captions. You'll select the language spoken. There's quite a few to select from. Confirm. And then, oh, there we go. Took, some minute, took a minute. So you'll start be able to see the captions on the bottom side. So speech and language. Turn off live captions if you don't need them. Again, in speech and language, you have turn on speaker coach. I will listen to you, analyze your speech, and give you private feedback. So it's just to see that if you're, you know, it's a, just another little item that's provided to you. Again, in the more menu, you have settings. In settings, let me close that one. In settings, you have a couple of uh, additional options. You want notifications? Do you want you don't do you want the uh, bubble chats to show up on your screen, or maybe you don't want them to show up because it's taking too much space? Um, you have accessibility. Do you want a sign language or do you want captions? And you have your meeting options. Those are the same meeting options that you were um, provided when you created the meeting. And you want to see the call health. If the internet's slow, it gives you an idea of where it's working, uh, the network, the audio, 
um, so see if your internet's pretty slow or not. And then you have device settings. Device settings gives you your audio settings. It allows you to show you how, uh, if your microphone's working, which speakers are you using? Maybe you have different speakers and you wanna change them. There's noise suppression. We choose low if you want others to hear music, but it's already on auto by default. And you have camera settings. Do you have more than one camera connected? Choose the camera that you want to use. Do you want to mirror your video? It turns it backwards or not backwards. And you're able to adjust the brightness. OK, that's all under your more tab. Following that is the apps icon. When you select apps, it will provide you a list of the different apps that you're able to add to use while you're presenting. And they'll download to your computer. Next to it is rooms. This is where you'll have your breakout rooms. When you have when you select rooms, you'll be able to choose from anywhere from two rooms to up to 50 rooms to create. You're able to automatically assign teams depending on the student population that you have. If you have 30, I could assign them equally, or you can assign them manually to create the rooms. Following rooms is the view. What type of view do you want to see? Do you have the option between a gallery where they're all showing together? Do you want to always show the speaker, which where whoever is speaking will be spotlighted? Or do you want a together mode, which gives you a theater type setting, amphitheater, different type of, um, of backgrounds where everyone will be displayed on your screen at the same time. So there's quite a few selections. And it gives you the amount of size of people that can be in that room. So for example, on the, this one fits up to 50 people. This one only fits up to five people. So you'll need to make sure that you get select one that will accommodate all your population audience. In view, you also have more options where you can show the gallery up top, turn off incoming video, or go to full screen. The next icon that we'll see is your react button. When you react, you have some emojis typed you like, love, applause, laugh, and surprised. Notice that when I select one, it will show up on my video and disappear within a couple seconds. If students have a questions, they can select race or they'll raise their hand and an image will appear, a number one, that there's someone asking a question. When you select it, notice that my um, video camera has my hand raised and then lowering your hand in a few seconds, we notice you've spoken. Once that person has spoken, the hand will automatically disappear as it just did. So if I raise my hand again, my video turns a yellow border and the hand showing there. But it's also notifying me that on the people, when I select people, it will show me a list of participants that I can scroll down through. And I've noticed that in this meeting, I'm in yellow because my hand was up. Okay. Once I, again, it picks up that I'm speaking and it'll, it'll quote me that, hey, you've already spoken. I'll be lowering your hand in a little bit. The next tab over is people. Similar to now that when we select people, no one's in yellow because no one's asking a question. You can share your invite. You can search the participants by name. In people, you can also manage permissions, download the attendance list, or lock the meeting so that nobody else can join. Next, you have chat. When you select chat, you'll be able to type in the chat for that meeting. Send emojis. It 
Cards and Stickers. GIFs, GIFs, however it's called. My favorite right now. It's Friday. I'd send an attachment. You can attach from this device or from the cloud files if you're just logged in. So if I select upload from this device, it's going to open my desktop. Let's just pick a file. It attaches to it and I'll go and will send. To change cameras, you have an ellipse, the three dots on the bottom left hand side. When you select it, you'll be able to switch camera. If you have additional cameras attached to your device, you could pin for me, you could pin a student or a participant to your screen so you can monitor them more easily. You could hide me so that they won't see you or you could spotlight your screen, your video for everyone, all the participants, students on your session. Spotlight for everyone. So now they'll focus on your video during the session. Exit Spotlight, Exit Spotlight. Sharing on your Teams. On the top right hand side, next to the leaf button, there's a share icon. When you press it, you will have the different options of sharing content to your participants. Again, you need to, if you want to include your computer sound when you're sharing, make sure that you select include computer sound. You have different types of presenter mode. You could have the content only, which there's no a video of you, just the content that you're presenting. There is the standout where you'll have your screen as well, including the content. You have side by side, like a half screen. Or you have the reporter, where you'll just be a viewer participant as well. You can select what to share. Are you going to share your screen? Or are you going to share a selected window, that a tab that's already open on your um, desktop or computer? You're able to share a whiteboard where you could collaboratively work on this whiteboard. Or you're going to share content from the camera or a shared document. You also have the option of sharing files. When you share those files, you'll be able to select a file that was currently open or browse your computer to select a file that you're going to share. So if I select Browse, it'll open what I have. I'll scroll down to, let's open some sort of file here. When you select the file to share, the file will display. Once you share that file, your file will display, and that file will display with a red border around it. You'll be able to have a laser pointer, you have pens, you have highlighters and erasers in which you can start interacting in with the shared document. You can stop on the top. You have a couple more options. You could do a pop out, private view, or the layout. Or you can stop sharing that document when you stop sharing. I'll ask you, this will end the presentation for everyone to switch presenter. So stop presenting. And the document will be shared in the presentation. So this has been a quick, basic overview of Microsoft Teams um, of how to create a meeting, sharing a meeting, and using some of the options that are available to you during your Teams session.